welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Beloit, Wisconsin, where we're doing morning prayer. The Psalms for today, if you want to mark them early, are Psalm 93 and 96. If you do not have the Book of Common Prayer and want to follow along, you can find it at www.bcp.org. Um, and you look for daily office, and we're on morning prayer, um, right to. We'll begin today on page 78. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. We'll continue with the Vianiti on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. 
Oh, that today you would hearken to my voice. Our psalm today is Psalm 93, as found on page 722. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole earth so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. We continue with Psalm 96, as found on page 725. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so form that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our reading today is from Judges 6, 1 through 24. The Israels did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. The hand of Midian prevailed over Israel, and because of Midian, the Israelites provided for themselves hiding places in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. For whenever the Israelites put in sea, the Midianites and the Ammonites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the land as far as the neighborhood of Gaza and leave no substance in Israel, no sheep, ox, or donkey. For they and their livestock would come up and they would even bring their tents 
as thick as locusts. Neither they nor their camels could be counted. So they wasted the lamb and they came in. Thus Israel was greatly impervished because of Midian and the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites and he said to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians from the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not pay reverence to the gods of Amorites and whose, in whose land you live. But you have not given heed to my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak of Oprah, which belonged to Johash, and the Amazonite and his king Gide and his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon answered him, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the land of Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. I hereby commission you. He responded, But sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike down the Midianites, every one of them. Then he said to them, If now I have found favor with you, then show me a sign that it is you who speak to me. Do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, I will stay until you return. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a kid and unleavened cakes from an ephrath flour. The meat he put in a basket and the broth he put in a pot and brought them to him under the oak and presented them. The angel of God said to him, take the meat, the unleavened cakes, and put them on this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of his staff that was in his hand and touched the meat, the unleavened cakes, and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon perceived that it was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, Help me, Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. And Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace, and to this day it still stands at Oprah, which belongs to Abizites. Here ends the reading. We will continue with the Song of Zechariah, which is Canticle 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old 
that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hated us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Then Jesus went back home, but again a crowd gathered. There were so many people that Jesus and his followers could not eat. His family heard about all these things. They went to get him because people were saying that Jesus was out of his mind. And the teachers of the law from Jerusalem were saying, Beelzebub is living inside him. He uses power from the ruler of demons to force demons out. So Jesus called the people together and used stories to teach them. He said, Satan will not force his own demons out of people. A kingdom that fights against itself cannot continue. And a family that is divided cannot continue. And if Satan is against himself and fights against his own people, he cannot continue. And that is the end of Satan. If a person wants to enter a strong man's house and steal his things, First, he must tie up the strong man. Then the thief can steal the things from the strong man's house. I tell you the truth. All sins that people do can be forgiven. And all the bad things people say against God can be forgiven. But any person who says bad things against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of a sin that continues forever. Jesus said this because the teachers of the law said that Jesus had an evil spirit inside him. Here ends the reading. morning. Um, I'm filling in for TJ today, and I'm really excited to be here, but um, this is a terrifying gospel to preach from last minute. I mean, okay, stop. An unforgivable sin? I'm not trained for this. <laughs> it's terrifying. But you know what? I do have a compass, and so do you. And if love is our guide, we can digest this scripture meaningfully. So, before we go on, let's call ourselves in and breathe and center on love. First, I'm not here to tell you who is going to heaven and who is not. I don't presume to know. What I do know is that Jesus gave us a very strongly worded gospel that we need to pay attention to. When I was a kid, I sometimes worried that I could be tricked out of salvation. You know, like one wrong move and you're out. But I've come to believe that that's not how God works. There's no like trick. That's not how God works. God is constantly 
extending forgiveness and salvation to us. My favorite Bible verse is Romans 8, 38 and 39, and it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God. So, God is not trying to trick us. I mean, did Jesus die on the cross to redeem the entire universe and then just leave out that one little part? I don't think so. There is no loophole in salvation. In the gospel, Jesus is actually responding to religious leaders and others who are calling his work through the Holy Spirit evil. But it's not just about their word choices. Let's look at the whole story. The religious leaders were dissuading people from the salvation that was right in front of them by saying that the beautiful power before them, healing the sick and forgiving sins and doing good works was of the devil. This is more insidious than saying, oh my God, or saying, the Holy Spirit is dumb. They were twisting the lens so that these clearly good, loving, observable, holy things seem not just bad, but evil. They were using their authority to confuse people to consolidate their own power. They were shaming people out of trusting their own spiritual in instincts and trusting their own experience of God. And they were doing all of this in the name of God. That is blasphemy. It creates a web of illusion where love seems to be hate and hate seems to be love. It's what John Vervik calls existential bullshit because it creates illusions for us that justify wrong, like saying, White skin is better than black skin. We are bullshitting ourselves if we buy into this blasphemy. And we are bombarded by blasphemy of that all kinds every day, aren't we? But I think Jesus' words in the gospel today are less about condemnation and more about what my mom would call a kick in the pants, a push, to figure out how to ground ourselves in truth so we don't fall victim to being misled or to misleading others. In the fun house of mixed messages from church leaders, from political leaders, from celebrities, and from others, how do we know what's right and what's wrong? Love. Love is our internal compass. Love helps us cut through the blasphemy bullshit. We can grow in our ability to tap into love. We can find our calm centers. Find the God of love that is inside of you through meditation and prayer. I mean, we have infinite love just living in our chests. We can ground ourselves in that love. So, love yourself. Go love and be loved by others. Go be in love with nature and with art. See God in the faces of each person you meet. And let love be your guide. Spread love in your small corner of the world. That's how we beat the blasphemy bullshit. That's how we cut through the illusions. But do we know what is loving? It seems like a silly question, but I had a pastor tell me that exercising the demons that caused my homosexuality was the loving thing to do. And I have watched Christians denounce love between people of the same genders and say that was the loving thing to do. And in the meantime, they excluded those people from community and they said that was the loving thing to do. So, we need a lesson in love. If every day mystical connection is coming in fuzzy, and some days it does, we can turn to scripture Turns out, Jesus told us how to love and gave us instructions for what that should look like. 
In Matthew, Jesus gives us these. Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, invite the stranger, clothe the naked, care for the sick, visit the imprisoned. Things in line with uplifting the human condition align with love, and they beat the blasphemy. And then, of course, Paul helps us identify love, too. Love is patient. Love is kind. Kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. The service will continue with Canticle 21 on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubims and seraphims, Sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shut the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. We'll use suffrages B on page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you made us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us with your spirit that we, reaching forth with our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. O God, the King eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross. Now we will pause and take a moment to add your petitions and prayers. Lord, we thank you for hearing the thoughts of our minds, the words of our mouth, the concerns in our heart. Hear our petitions and fulfill them as is best for all. Amen. We'll continue on page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.